they're doing well they're all hiding under the rock right now and uh, that's why right there because that's where Gemma likes to stay especially when we feed the fish so what's up guys we're back with another video before we get started go down there subscribe the notification bell and like this video if you haven't already you'll get notified every time we post a video to bring it up and so today we're going to be doing a pond update we're going to be doing a couple more plants here we're going to two right there and two right there and then we also got two packages from office food. that's and right i have no idea what what's going <laughs> Well, it's a little bit windy today, which feels great. The weather's nice. I wish you dogs would quit playing in our plants. Earl, knock it off. Uh, the leaves are starting to fall. We're getting quite a few leaves on the ground, which they're hitting the pool, and that means um, leaves in the pool, or pond. I keep calling it a pool. It's not a pool. I say pool because it's got a skimmer, just like a pool does, but it's a pond. And uh, we hadn't done an update for you guys Gemma, you're filthy. We haven't done a pond update for you guys in a while, and everyone's been asking about Houston's fish, and right now they're all hiding because all the dogs are looking at them. But the three koi and three goldfish are, they're doing well. They're all hiding under the rock right now, and uh, that's why right there, because that's where Gemma likes to stay, especially when we feed the fish. But like Houston said, we're going to be adding some plants to his landscaping around the pond. We bought a couple, um, like, ornamental grasses to put back there. Bought a couple little slow-growing, creeping, ground-crawling junipers for some... Because when winter hits, we're not going to have any color around the pond right now. Everything else that we planted, with the exception of a couple plants, is doing really well. Considering we planted them when it was 100 degrees, I'll call it a success. So the only plants that are struggling, we've got one hosta that's um, probably getting a little too much sunlight. We'll see how it does. We may end up having to transplant it, move it somewhere else. The little variegated willow was struggling for a while, but it's come back and doing really well. Japanese maple's doing good. These hostas are, they're doing okay. We did lose one of the ferns. It, uh, it just struggled. That's part of planting when it's 100 degrees. But uh, everything else is doing really good. I would say the best growing plants by far are the ones that we pulled out of the creek and planted. In the water. In the water, that's right. Yeah, I wonder how. Yeah. <laughs> so we planted uh, that little grass, this big clump of grass. They're just in pots. Earl loves to eat that grass for some reason. And a couple over here. And they seem to be doing really, really well. The dogs love the pond um bella and Gemma and earl all three spend a lot of time out here every day so we have to take that into consideration when we're putting plants in the ground oh, you about fell in the water didn't you yeah. we have to take that into consideration because that's just part of it we're right next to our patio and i know the dogs are going to spend time in it so we're not going to put a lot of tender plants that they would damage real easily if that makes sense to you so, you know, that's why we're just using things like ornamental grasses. This is liriope, it's monkey grass. You can just pretty much abuse it. <laughs> uh, hostas are pretty, pretty sturdy. And uh, they're, those are doing, that one there is doing really, really well. Yeah. And then we're gonna put a couple big um, ornamental grasses. Let me tell you exactly what these are. I can't remember. These are maiden grass should get about uh, four to six feet tall and my theory here is we'll plant these back behind that waterfall as kind of a backdrop when you're on the patio looking at the pond so that it doesn't draw your eye up into Narnia here so let's get to planting what do you think did you tell them about the bird oh no I didn't I did not so what else did we add to the pond that we hadn't shown on video Yep, two hummingbird feeders. The ants have found that one. Ants got into it. Uh, so we've got two hummingbird feeders, and we've been seeing quite a few hummingbirds, haven't we? Yeah. And then we have this bird feeder. Yep. Added one just regular bird feeder. Um, supposed to be, you know, squirrel proof. Actually, it's the squirrel's favorite. The squirrels are on it all the time, but it does 
Uh, we do see a ton of birds in the morning and in the evenings coming to get a drink and bathe in the pond. The hummingbirds are usually here right before dark. And I've never seen any bird bathe. You haven't? No, oh, I I've see them. I've always seen them just walk right up to it. Well, they come up and get a drink. They get out here and bathe early in the mornings. Hey, you dogs today have got to knock it off. Earl's feeling frisky. Bend my shovel. Let's see if we can get it out of the pot. These things are kind of rough on the hands, man. You got to be careful with them. They will straight up cut you. But they're very drought tolerant and uh, hopefully pretty shade tolerant. Build some dirt in around them, buddy. I'll start digging on the other hole. You get that one planted. Move, Bella. Move, Bella. size hole. Man, whoever dug that did a good job, you see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got our two little junipers in, one on that side of the pond, one on this side of the pond. Those will look good once they start to fill in. Our two maiden grass. They look kind of small right now and I spread them apart, but they're supposed to get three to four feet wide. So I didn't want to plant them too close together, but that should make a a really good natural backdrop for the pond um, after they start to fill in. The next thing we're going to do is mulch. We bought five more bags of mulch. More mulch because mulch. mulch makes it look good, man. And once we get it all mulched, then we'll open these boxes real quick. But we need to add some mulch around a few different places. I'm telling you, that's Jimmy's favorite spot. She loves to watch the fish, doesn't she? Yeah. Here's you a bag. It starts spreading. Wait, can you take a spot? I'm going to start dumping it and spread it around. Scatter it around. Well, I bought six, no, five bags of that cedar mulch, and uh, it's gonna take a couple more. Um, hey, water in around the base of that plant really well. That ground around those is really dry. So, we got everything mulched in for the most part. I wanna bring the mulch out just a little bit farther eventually, and I need a couple more bags to fill in around these, because I'm telling you, it sure looks a lot better where the mulch is, doesn't it, Houston? But uh, we're coming along. This is a, a uh, project that never really stops, you know it? Mm -hmm. It's a work in progress, let's call it that. Yeah. Be sure and water that other one really good too. But we're getting there. It's so cool, man. I, I really enjoy this thing. I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy it so much. And actually before Greg and Brian and everybody really, about two weeks before they showed up to build this, um, I'm going to say I made a mistake and I reduced the size to reduce the cost a little bit. And I really wish we would have went a little bit bigger. I think they call this an 11 by 14 pond, but that's the size of the pond with just the liner. I didn't realize by the time you add all the rocks in, we're looking at maybe eight to 10 feet this way and about six feet that way. So it's fairly small, but our first one and we can always grow from here right yep. so while houston gets everything watered in really well i just want to take a second to, to tell you guys 
as cool as this thing looks in the daytime, nighttime is when this thing really shines. So it's all lit up underwater and everything. I really love to come out here at night, right before bedtime, and just sit on the edge, like sit on one of these rocks, put my feet in, feed the fish, and it just looks magical at night. I recorded a little bit of video last night just to show you guys. So check this out. Check out the difference in daytime versus nighttime. The nighttime video to me is unreal. Guys, at night is when this pond is so cool. I mean, it's awesome in the daylight, but to come out here at night and feed the fish a little bit, man, it's just, it's just the neatest thing ever. All right, so the other day, the guys at Aquascapes reached out to me and said, hey, do you mind if we send Houston a care package, a few more things to add on to his fish pond? And I was like, well, no, I don't care at all. So this is mostly just like hardware stuff to make an Aquascape pond better. So let's see what all you got, Houston. Open them up. I may have already opened them just so I would know what they were ahead of time. The first one is a extra pouch it's an extra pouch of maintain for their automatic doser system. Keeps ponds clean, clear, and healthy. Yeah, don't eat the packing peanuts. That is this little guy right here. I don't know if I can open it with one hand. I'll try. Yep, so it's an electronic um, machine that drops those chemicals into the pond. So we buried this line, goes over into the skimmer box and you set your size of your pond and everything and it automatically doses the bacteria and chemicals that you need to keep your pond clean and clear super exciting for a nine-year-old boy right yeah hey it's what keeps the pond clean clean and clear so all right let's see what else is in another box okay oh, what is this oh it's uh, a structure or um take it out oh. i know what it is I it's, it's a big box in a big box, huh? Do you, do you, hey, wait. what's grab the other stuff first, and then we'll do pull the big box out. It? Mm, you could probably. So, do you know what that is? No. It's not exciting for you, is it? Sort of. You'll actually like this. This yeah. is a smart plug control, so like our lights and everything. You can plug everything into this. This is a Wi-Fi enabled plug-in that will allow us to remotely from anywhere turn our lights on and off, our pump on and off, do everything that's electronic oh. on our pond through our Wi-Fi, through an app. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Next is the smart pond thermometer, which we can also plug that in to the smart plug and we'll be able to see our temperature and everything, see how the water quality is, water temperature. That's kind of a, just an extra add-on. Then last, whoops, the last thing is a faux stump. So do you know what that's for, Houston? No. You said a chair, a stool or something. Or for fish structure or something. Nope, it's not for fish structure. It's hollow on the inside. So it gives us a place to protect and hide all of our, like our pump control box. This is our light control box. We can set that stump right here on the ground and we put all of that stuff inside of it and it protects it. But is it gonna be partly on the concrete then? Nope, nope, we'll set it right next to the concrete. I'll show them. We'll set it up real quick. Yeah. We'll plug, unplug this stuff. Wait, so what does that do? It's a it's a electric plug-in that will connect to our Wi-Fi. Oh. And we'll be able to control all of our stuff through the, the uh, app that they have. Oh. oh no, the table. It's broken.
so here's our faux stump and the the idea behind this faux stump is it's hollow underneath and you can use it to hide all of your electronics um, right now i'm gonna have to get me a, a shorter i mean a, a short a longer cord for the smart plug it only comes with like a four inch cord on it and i'm not able to set the stump over this box now one thing i could do and i may do hop up buddy if we're going to leave the stump here permanently well here is what i may do is cut a notch this out to where i can just set the stump over all of that because all of my all of my main pond controls are right here and we'll add the thermometer and run that, that cord over here bury everything and put it right here but i'm not going to cut the back of this stump out today i just think that would be the perfect thing to do to add extra protection to the outlet which this is weather protected but um just to keep everything together i think the best decision would be to cut the back out of this set it up against the wall but it makes a perfect little stool you know what houston yeah so we'll get everything set up eventually we don't have the uh, thermometer unhooked and unboxed yet that's the main thing where did the thermometer go oh you've got it so it's just a uh, a smart digital thermometer and uh, we'll get that all hooked up in in the pond probably not right now we're fixing to have to get out of here and go watch emily play softball all day you know it yeah. So, there you go. The Aquascape Pond is doing good. A lot of people have been asking for updates on how the fish were doing, how the pond's doing. The dogs love the pond. Um, Bella gets in it about five or six times a day, which the water stays fairly clean, even though she does, but she makes this really nice trail right up to here. And then usually you can just see her steps right down to where she's at right now. Come on, Bella. So thanks to Aquascape for sending this stuff out for Houston's Pond. It's yeah. really, every little thing helps. Makes the pond better, makes the fish better, makes the water quality better. And uh, it's been fun learning all of this stuff for me personally. I know I've enjoyed it a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like a little outdoor classroom for Houston and I. And everyone that comes over, it's like the first thing they will go see is the pond yes. and the yes. fish and everything. So be sure to check out uh, Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guys YouTube channel. Aquascape, Team Aquascape, Ed the Pond Professor. These guys build ponds water features recreational I mean, ponds they, they literally build ponds our whole backyard i mean our whole side yard right here literally yeah i mean they build them big enough to swim in recreational yes. ponds in neighborhoods that won't allow a swimming pool call it a recreation fish pond but anyways go check them out um it was awesome working with those guys getting to collaborate with them to build this thing was so much fun and uh i enjoy it every single day what about you yep because i love my job <laughs> So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, we'll see you on the next video. Peace.